Good afternoon, my peeps. I'm excited about this one. I hope my excitement does not turn into multiple and multiple reports. I am doing, of course, the uh, September challenge with Nate's Art Lab, and it is to do a wing pour or a waterfall pour. I am going to do this as a wing pour, I believe. We'll see when the rubber hits the road. So what I have is a 10 by 30 edge canvas. And what's fun about this one is I have a spot in my dining room where a nice, long, tall canvas uh, or, you know, a, a narrow, tall canvas I think would look fantastic. So my colors are going to be in the vein of the color of my dining room, which is about a um, gray. It's like a blue gray. So um, the canvas is prepped and I'll be back in a few minutes to get started. I am still undecided on what uh, I'm doing. Which of those two? And that is interesting because I'm gloving up and I'm ready. The paint is ready and the camera's up on the rig and the canvas is ready. And the reason I am unsure is because to do the wing pour with W-I-N-G, uh, really you should use a split cup of some type. This is the split cup I have. And it's a lot bigger than the amount of paint I plan to put in it. And so I'm a little concerned about getting the paint out um, onto the canvas properly. The other thing I'm still not sure about, can you tell I'm just, my confidence is really down. I don't know why that is, but hopefully we're gonna, we're gonna knock it out of the park this time. Okay. As I was talking to you, I, I decided. So what I'm gonna do is a wing pour and I'm going to put the puddle, the base as a puddle and pour the wing onto it. So let me tell you a little bit about the colors I'm using. The colors I'm using are primarily one slop color. Um, and by that I mean um, just paints that have been scraped off my table and um, in, in this case, mixed together over quite a while, probably a couple months time. And they were, I strained them. And then because there was like table scrapings, like things that were like stuck on the mat in there. So they had to be strained, but it is, I am calling this Wedgwood Blue. It's like um, an old time um, plates. Um, so might be aging myself a little, but I'm gonna call it Wedgwood Blue, but really it's just a slop color. Um, this is also gonna go in my cup. And then, so I have a couple um, cups of that thinner to go as the puddle to start. So that's one of the colors that's going in the cup. The other colors that are going in the cup are, this is Golden's Fluid Thalo Blue Green Shade. And that I mixed with some pouring medium and um, a little bit of gloss gel to get to the consistency of everything else. And then the other color is Artist Loft. Um, this is Metallic Cobalt Blue, I believe is what it's called. Metallic Cobalt Blue, yep. And then my fourth color is going to be this, which is Iridescent Pearl Fine um, Golden Fluids. And so again, the base that I'm using or that little puddle of this Wedgwood Blue, this is not transparent. So having the Iridescent Pearl, which is in fact transparent as part of my one of my colors, shouldn't be too much of a problem because I have a base that is not transparent. And even the uh, phthalo group blue green shade is also transparent, but uh, the base is not. So uh, hopefully my colors will not only look beautiful on the base, but will kind of take advantage of the transparency in the best possible way. So let's hope. 
Okay, so now that I have in real time made my decision to do the wing pour in the split cup, I am going to go ahead and be right back with my ready cup. I'm sorry I didn't fill this cup on camera. I know that if you are new to this, it's it's an important piece of the process, but honestly wasn't even sure I was doing a split cup until I started talking in the prior segment. So what I have here is the base color in the middle and the uh, phthalo blue on one side, the cobalt metallic on the other side, and the iridescent white in, in between the base and the, each of the colors. The canvas, as you can see, is tilted. I would guess it is about between 30 and 45 degrees on a tilt. So it's just uh, on a uh, cup. It's literally just a seven ounce little cup. And I would estimate it to be about four inches high. I'll show you a still photograph of the canvas with the cup under it right here. I want to do it all with you by my side. If you're in, meet me here tonight. Be brave and come along. I'll be your right. Promise we don't need no brake lights. We can travel the world, so just say yes. Choose to do whatever comes next. I didn't give a whole lot of thought about the camera angle on this one. I should have. And I'm really not getting a wing, unfortunately. I probably should have filled the first, the three middle chambers with my base and then put the colors in the outer. Uh, the other four chambers on the outer. This was a seven chamber cup and I should have used the full middle, all three chambers in the middle to create that wing. We can travel the world so just say yes Choose to do whatever comes next To just be brave and come along I wanna do it all this or this or Drunk on whiskey on a Tuesday night. A drinking red wine by an open fire. Make love a fight. This or that. This or that. Evenings on the train. I'll catch a morning fly. Enjoying dinner until midnight. Only bed by night. This or This or This or that.
It's good, it's good, it's good. So I think I'm gonna try to get the paint some weight right around here and get it, get moved off this way. Um, these are cool, but I uh, don't know. Um, maybe I'll go back this way. over me and I need to clean up. Okay, I've cleaned up a little bit and I am going to spend a few minutes using the drips on this table uh, and what little cup of paint I may have in my cups to uh, fix my sides and edges. This needs another torching and it might even need some goober removal. I'm going in for goober digging. This is definitely my most hated thing to do because I do not have the steadiest of hands and I don't want to ruin these amazingly beautiful lines. There's definitely something in there. Whatever it was, there it is. I got it. Oh, got it good. Got it on the first try for that one. Kind of love it. So I think I'm going to very carefully get you up that rig. And down here we can see this a little more close up. Be right back. Okay, we're gonna go in to look at the close-up, but we're first gonna do a little scraping of our drips. transparency of some of these colors like for instance all of them except my base is creating effects that I didn't even really 
anticipate and I'm kind of excited. Okay, folks, this piece is dry, and I am actually so pleasantly surprised with what I've got. I don't know if this is at all what it's supposed to look like, but I love it just for what it is. Um, so I have it put this way, and I will show you in a minute it flipped around the other way. Uh, I know that in the beginning of this video I discussed hanging it um, vertically but I just don't see that for this piece and the transparency of some of the paints and of course we have a little shimmer which is always welcome so uh, hold on one second I'm gonna flip it over okay so I flipped it over I've also shut off the overhead lights there's a good amount of natural light coming in from my windows so I think this might work a little better and I'm not quite sure which way I like it better. Maybe this way, but uh, it might be the other way. Why don't you tell me what you think? The first way or the second way? But this is really exceeding my expectations for how this was going while I was doing it. And uh, yeah, I like it. So thanks for being here. Come back and paint with me again.